What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? Chana D, your techno dad here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to buy amp or buy wire your speakers. And we're going to get into it right after the jump. <music> And I'm back. Now if you're new to the channel and want to learn about 4K, home theater, and audio products and how to set them up properly, you should consider subscribing because I'm here to help. Now that's out of the way, let's get into it. Alright people, so I've been getting this question a few times from some of my regular viewers and subscribers and they want to know how to do this. Buy amp or buy wire their speakers. Now there is a difference, so we're going to get into all that, but I just want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. You do not need to do this, okay? There I said it, not necessary. People wanna do this and speaker companies allow you to do this by giving you dual binding posts. So here's the first thing. If your speakers do not have dual binding posts, you cannot buy wire or buy amp your speakers, okay? Now if you wonder what dual binding post means, I'm gonna show you the back of my Klipsch RP280F and you notice two binding posts here and they're connected with these copper clips or whatever you wanna call them. Now to remove those plates, you simply unscrew the binding posts, remove one side, do it again for the other side. Now usually the top binding post is for the high frequency and the lower binding post is for the lower frequency. So now that that's done, let's dive into buy wire first. So what's the basic idea here? You actually are using one pair of binding posts on the amp or AV receiver, and that's going to go to two separate binding posts on the back of the speaker. So how do you do this? You do this with two sets of cable, okay? Now I've seen there's some cable where you like plug in on one side to the amp and it splits off into four plugs on the other side and you can invest in those if you like, but you know, you can just do this with whatever you have laying around anyway. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? So I found this slide online that kinda shows you exactly what's going on. So from one speaker output on your amplifier or AV receiver, you connect two sets of cable one of those pairs of cable is gonna to go to the high frequency binding post and the other to the low frequency binding post. And that's it. You connect both speakers, your left and right, up that way. And there you have it, by wire. That's what it is. Now, how can you do this like normally if you don't have those special cables? So I pulled out the Parasound and this is kind of where those spade connectors on those SVS cables really come in handy. So what I'm gonna do on this one set of binding posts is connect the spade connectors onto the binding post like normal. And then I'm gonna take another cable and use the banana plugs to plug it in. And this is what it's gonna look like on an amplifier that has enough room for you to use spade connectors and that sort of thing. So that's what it looks like on the amplifier end. Now the speaker end is gonna look the same. We've taken the clips off and you just have two sets of banana plugs in there. That's pretty much the same. Now let's move over to the Yamaha RX V583. Now if you uh, noticed, I made a video about that. I'll put a link down in the description and then in a card here as well. Now if you have something like this where you can't use uh, spade connectors, I would recommend using a bare wire connection first. So let's do that. Now when we're done connecting the bare wire, we need to tighten the binding post as much as possible because guess what? We're gonna use banana plugs again to get in the other frequency. Whether it's the low or the high, it probably wouldn't matter at all which one goes to which. So we've got the bare wire connected like normal and we are using banana plugs for a second pair of cables. So there you have it. That's how you buy wire your speakers from your amp or AV receiver. One output going into two separate binding posts on the back of your speakers. Okay, now let's move into buy amp. And I think by the name, you could kind of guess it. You're actually using two outputs going into two inputs on your speakers. So you're actually doubling the amplification that's going to one speaker. Now this is the one I like out of the two. I'm not really you know, into doing all this, but if I were to choose one of these, I would definitely buy amp. Now let's jump into the Denon amp assign because we're definitely going to have to make some changes. For you guys that are out there that have an AV receiver and have an extra couple of channels like surround backs or some height channels that you're not using, you could easily buy amp your speakers, again, if your speakers um, 
have two sets of binding posts. So let's jump onto the Denon, yeah? So here we are at the Denon setup menu. We need to go into speakers, then we need to go into manual setup and amp assign. Now the assign mode says 11.1 .1 channels. Now we need to change that to 9.1 .1 channel by amp. And the little diagram there kind of shows you what's going on. It's really, really handy and really informative if you're new to this kind of thing. Now let's go down here to terminal configuration. So as you can see on the left, we have the five channels. Then we have two empty ones. Those are the surround backs because I don't have any. Then we have height one left and right, which I do have. And then height two left and right has been changed to by amp front left, by amp front right. Now let's go back and just underneath the assign mode, it says speakers for by amp. Now currently that's at height two and we can change that to surround back. So now we are by amping with the surround back channels. Now you need to make sure when you're doing this that you match left to left and right to right. And so there you have it. That's how you buy amp your speakers. Now let's talk about results. And this is kind of where it's tricky because it's totally subjective. So what I might find to be true, you may not find to be true. Or your friend does it and he loves it and it's great in his or her room and you try it in your place and it's not as fantastic. Well, that's all because everything is subjective and a lot of this stuff, you know, it depends on your room characteristics and all that. So I prefer to buy amp if I was going to do one of the two. I'm not. I don't. If I was going to do one of the two, I would buy amp because in theory, you're doubling the um, wattage going to each speaker, right? Because you're connected to two separate speaker outputs, not just the one. So I like it in theory. That's what I would do. Now, what did I notice? With the buy wire, I didn't really notice much of a difference. With the buy amp, I did notice a difference. And really, it's just a matter of when I turn up the volume on the AV receiver, I noticed it would get louder faster. Like I didn't have to crank it up as much to get the same kind of volume output. That's pretty much it. Now, the question is, should you go out and buy extra stuff to try this out? No, you should not. You should not. If your system's working perfectly fine, don't mess with it, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I've just got this question before from a lot of people and they want to know how to do this for this. So this video is kind of for just for you guys. And I guess for everybody else that just wants to know what you can do, but this is definitely not necessary. Now, a lot of people will say you have to do this and a lot of people swear by it. A lot of people say you can do it, and, but you won't really notice a difference. And um, there's people like me, which I, I could do it, but that would mean, you know, it'd be really great for two channel listening because both the front left and the front right would be getting that extra power. However, in the movie situation, the center would not be getting uh, that same amount of power. So how could I do it then? You know, I would prefer to buy a three channel amp running, just pushing like 200 watts per channel into eight ohms, of course, uh, for the front three channels, or maybe get like 125 watt times five or 180 watt times five uh, power amplifier just to get all of my five uh, speakers at like ear level and let the amplifier or the AV receiver handle the four um, Atmos channels or the two Atmos and the two surround backs or whatever. Whatever. It really just all is subjective and you know, it. if you want to try and do this, go ahead, do it. If you have questions about it, leave them in the comments. But for the most part, I'm not doing this. So there you go. All right, well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using that button right there. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad, and I'll see you next time.